What's the best type of Fukumushi Sencha? In this episode, we're going to compare the Kasuga N Asatsuyu Shincha with the Murasaki Sencha to see which one is the best. Before we get started, it would really mean a lot to us if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for future tea videos. We have hundreds of videos on all sorts of different subjects, but for this one, we're going to focus on Fukumushi Sencha. Let's get started. Okay, so I have two different teas to try today. The first is the Kasuga N Asatsuyu Shincha, and the second is the Murasaki Sencha. Um, so these are two deep steamed or fukumushi teas from Mr. Kawaji. Um, he has a small tea farm right outside of Kagoshima, uh, and there he's really specializing in these deep steamed fukumushi teas, which both of these are. Um, so actually I have to go get a pair of scissors real quick to cut this open because it's a new pack. So I'm just going to go ahead and open this up. It's kind of shrink wrapped here. So the air will kind of escape. Should be nice and fresh. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, pour out five grams or so of this tea. I'm using kind of a rough estimation here. So I like to think that after all these years, I can kind of eyeball it out and, and get the measurement more or less accurate. Uh, these teas are probably going to look pretty similar, although the Murasaki may have smaller pieces, and that just may be because I'm uh, further down the pack. Um, so you see the color is about the same between these two teas. Uh, they're both kind of scattered into these smaller leaf fragments. So um, in addition to these larger leaves, you can also see this kind of, I wouldn't call it quite a dust, but it's definitely smaller leaf particles. And this is common with uh, fukumushi. So normally this would be something you don't want in a tea, um, but if the tea is fukumushi, you don't really need to worry about this. It's just kind of a side effect of how the tea is prepared. Um, so this tea is steamed for a longer time, and um, you know, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later while we're waiting for the tea to brew. So let's go ahead and prepare these two teapots. Murasaki on the right, Kasuga and Shincha, Asatsuyu Shincha on the left. And then I'm going to be using a little bit over... 60 degrees Celsius water for these. And we're going to do a brewing time of 45 seconds because I always overbrew these teas. Put a little bit more in here. These teas are easy to overbrew because um, they're deep steamed Fukumushi teas. Um, so during the steaming process, the longer steaming process, where they're steamed for 30 seconds or so longer, um, the leaves become more brittle and they're more easily broken in the pack. Um, so they're breaking down into these smaller leaf particles, so that's why it's not really a problem um, that this tea is, uh, has these smaller leaf particles. It's not a sign of lower quality uh, with Fukumushi, it's just kind of what you get with the tea. Um, and it's also the reason why it's a shorter steeping time. So we're doing 45 seconds instead of one minute, and the reason for that is um, the smaller leaf particles have a, a higher relative surface area, and therefore they infuse more quickly into the water. This one out. Quickly. This one. So, more or less the same water level, I would say. Maybe a tiny bit more for the um, Asatsuyu. So the Asatsuyu, as the name would suggest, is from the Asatsuyu cultivar, whereas the um, Kasuga and Murasaki is from the Yutaka Midori. Um, so these are both great, great cultivars. Asatsuyu is, is known for being more commonly used in, in kind of premium teas like Gyokuro, um, whereas the Yutaka Midori is really a great uh, tea for Fukumushi. Um, this one is usually kind of, because uh, Asatsuyu is usually considered almost too good to make a Fukumushi tea, um, but Mr. Kawaji tried it out, and uh, the results have been very good. So, uh, Yutaka Midori, which the Murasaki is, is actually the second most popular tea cultivar in Japan after Yabukita, so that's an important detail. Um, if you look at the color here, this one's much greener. Uh, Asatsuyu actually means, uh, no, actually, sorry. It's Yutaka Midori that means abundant green. Um, but as you can see here, the, the uh, Asatsuyu is actually, um, is actually a little bit more green here. So not exactly sure why that is, um, but it is interesting nonetheless. 
So let's go ahead and take a, a sip of the murasaki first. Oh yeah, I'm really getting a powerful flavor with this one. This one is a really full body tea. It kind of has, I would say like these tropical fruits. So you're getting like a little bit of a sting, uh, stringency. The beginning is very smooth, a little bit of that umami flavor, and then uh, the finish is kind of more on these tropical or more citrusy fruits actually. So things like papaya, maybe a tiny hint of pineapple, something like that. Just kind of a little bit sweet and fruity, but also kind of a little bit of that citrusy finish to them. So let's try the asatsuyu. Oh wow, there's a huge difference. Normally I kind of think of these teas as being very similar because they're made both using the Fukumushi style and they're both made by the same farmer from the same region, um, but they're completely different. This one's much stronger on those cereal notes. Yeah, a lot more of these starchy qualities. Um, there is that kind of sweet corn flavor that kind of, that draws you in initially and then it kind of has a more starchy finish. So when I'm talking about cereal, I'm not talking about like Lucky Charms, I'm more talking about kind of cereal grains, so like um, oats, rice, um, things like that. These kind of these starchy grains um, that I often get in teas, um, you know, like the asa, Asanoka is another example, but also here in the Asatsuyu. And, you know, none of these flavor profiles are kind of an indicator that one tea is better than the other. It really just comes down to preference. Um, so if you kind of like a little bit more of these kind of bold, um, bold savory flavors with a little bit of this kind of citrusy fruit finish. Uh, you should go for the murasaki. But if you enjoy more of this kind of mild sweet corn cereal flavor, uh, go for the asatsuyu. And uh, both of these teas work great as both a cold brew and also the second steeping is also very good. So we're not really going to have time to do a second steeping today, but I would encourage you to do that if you, if you try this tasting at home. Um, if you brew these teas a second time, you're really going to get a green color to them and um, even more flavor actually. The, this brewing right here is usually the sweetest, whereas the second infusion really has the most raw power. So, you know, really don't throw your leaves out after the first brewing because some people even prefer the second brewing. Yeah, now that I'm tasting it a second time, I'm getting more of these kind of steamed vegetable flavors from the murasaki. This is more what you would associate as like a, a typical fukumushi tea with, um, you know, a little bit of these fruity notes coming out, um, but mostly focused on kind of this steamed vegetable flavor. Because after all, when you steam the the tea leaves, you, it is a steamed vegetable similar to, you know, steamed spinach. Um, so it's only natural that during the longer steaming process, these, these flavors would come out a little bit more. So in the future, when I refer to uh, kind of a steamed vegetable flavor, just kind of think of uh, like steamed spinach, kind of, you know, when, when the, um, the spinach is steamed for just a couple seconds, it kind of actually gets greener in color. And that's that's the case with this tea here. So that's something just to kind of keep in mind, just to help you understand the concept of deep steam teas. So normally a tea is steamed for um, 60 to 90 seconds, but Fukumushi can be steamed up to 120 seconds. So it doesn't seem like that big of a difference, um, but if you've ever tasted two teas side by side, the, the normal steam versus the deep steam, you'll really notice a difference right away. So I hope you all get a chance to try out both of these teas or one of the other, um, however you, you choose to do it. Um, both of these teas are from the farmer, Mr. Kawaji, um, really talented farmer, uh, definitely our go one of our go-to farmers with these uh, deep steamed Fukumushi teas. Uh, so if you like those, check these out. They are included in the mega sampler as well. So if you want to try 30 different teas that we found from all over Japan, um, check that out and see which ones are your favorite. Um, but thank you all for making it this far in the video. If you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for future videos. We'd really appreciate it. Um, but until then, we'll see you next time.